The views and opinions of the hosts and resource persons do not represent those of the organization, the university, and its stakeholders. Viewer discretion is advised. Jared, this rap kaya before yung Nicki Minaj. <laughs> yeah. Starships. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I was a Nicki Minajer. Nicki Minaj. Ay ano ba? Kami pa yung Bolivia. I'm Nicki Minajer na LSTS. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my to another episode of the Internet Podcast. I'm your host for this evening, ID117's Jarek Singan. And with me today are my fellow music lovers. Um, can you introduce yourselves? Hi, so I'm Kali. I'm, fr- I'm from CCS ID120 from BSIT and I am a K-pop lover. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am also from ID120 and I am Jello de Guzman from BSCSST and I usually am a pop guy. <laughs> okay, so I'm Ira and uh, I'm BSIT117 and I usually like a lot of things but um, probably more on like Japanese rock right now. Okay, hi, I'm Navita Pasho, ID117, BSCS. Um, same with I, I listen to a lot of music, but I think my favorite is hip hop and rap. So before we go to our main discussion today, how is everyone doing so far in ACAS and also in personal life? Well, for me, I'm doing okay with my academics. Sajang may nayapan lao sa prog too, kasi coding and stuff, RA strings. Pero I'm doing okay naman, and for my personal life. Kind of happy, happy, kind of happy with what I'm doing with um orgs and stuff. So yeah, that's for me. Oh, uh, for me, naman. Well, Akads is Akads. As Kali said, na hirapan din ako sa arrays and stuff. I'm still, especially in an online environment, it's really, really hard to figure things out and to communicate with the profs and all. Uh, personal life, I'm quite contented. Kasi nakikita ko si crush palagi sa org. <laughs> So I think, no. I think that counts for my personal life. Yeah, yeah. Let's make this part. Let's right, make this I'm not gonna drop here. the name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's you know, tiring, stressful as always. And since like I have like three or four coding subjects right now, and I don't know, I'm just dying, honestly. But personal life... Is fine, Ren. I mean, well, in the situation we're in, I guess I'm doing okay lang naman. How's, this, how's your thesis going so far? Wala pa. Okay, hi. For me naman, Akad is okay. It's hard. Yeah, th- let's just mention thesis na tayo. So we're having a hard time. And then I'm kind of overloaded then this term. So yeah, I'm just trying my best to get through all my subjects. For personal life, kind of kind of delics now because I recently started playing like four different games, and yeah, that's not good in terms of arcades. <laughs> I'm playing, um, I play Warzone, and then I just got GTA, um, GTA, Stardew Valley, and I was I'm playing Minecraft with my friends. So. <laughs> Oh no, Minecraft. Oh no, I know Minecraft is <laughs> the killer. That's the killer. It's funny, especially with friends. So don't yeah, get me wrong. It's Appreciate dangerous it. for Akkad. But yeah. yeah, it's fun. <laughs> so I guess for me, what's been going on in my life right now is Actually, not much. I just finished reading the la- last chapter of Attack on Titan. So, 
<laughs> you know, oh no! It's, it's sad that it's ending, <laughs> and then the ending itself—it's very polarizing with the community. But for me, I actually enjoyed it. The last parts—I uh, can't spoil. I don't want to spoil anyone. Yeah. Don't, spoil, don't, spoil. don't spoil! Don't spoil! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is yes, it past I... the anime? I mean, will it be the same story? Because I didn't read the manga. How's the adaptation? I think so. The adaptation is really good. I think I always say that like. SNK is better on the anime than in the manga because I feel that it's, they weren't able to convey that much like the action when it comes to the manga because Isayama's not that. He's talented as a, as a story writer, but in terms of his art style, it's not that good. But I really still enjoyed his story. And I think that it's, I think uh, for anime people, if they are able to like uh, build on the story, I think they're going to really enjoy what's going to happen at the end of, of SNK. So stay tuned for that. But other than that, there was a new thing that happened today, which was Brockhampton's new album that got released already, which I think is their best work for for now. I mean, it's my, it's my favorite since the Saturation trilogy. And I think that's a good segue to our new topic for today, which is on music. So today's topic, we're diving into our musical tastes and preferences. This is in line with LSCS's uh, playlist initiative. So check out LSCS playlist on Spotify, link in the description below. So for this podcast, we'll be asking everyone to, we'll be asked everyone to give some of their song recommendations to share and talk about here. So I'll, we'll be linking our playlist also in this description for you guys to check it out for yourselves. So without further ado, um, let's start off our playlist with Kali. So uh, for this one, would you, you can play whatever song you want, I guess, and just tell us the, the title. This, I know. Curious. this song is one of I'm the best of songs that um resurfaced k-pop oh wait i think i know this one i'm so hyped <laughs> for this one play it kali play it okay wait 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 <laughs> i actually I don't know, know. I don't know which was actually i think i have a hunch yes yes Brave so girl. this is brave girls um their song is titled rolling so that this, this was released um back in back on 2017 but it didn't do well back then. And then right now, it's resurfacing the charts. And yeah, it's doing well, actually. So Brave Girls are having many casting calls because of this song. So yeah, that's about it. And I love this song so much because it's a nice song. All right, guys, let us go to the So let's bring up to our actual uh, discussion. And I guess... Um, Kali, would you ex- uh, share to us about the the tracks that you shared to us on the playlist? Okay, so there's an overall theme on the tracks that I shared to playlist. So these are the songs that I listen to when I study because um, they always give me the vibes that I need to do well. I need to have that energy, that motivation to... Um, do more, do more, Tarai. But you on. That's my driving force when I study. So, um, I usually listen to those um musics the music then whenever I'm kind of down because they're my driving motivation, talaga. So yeah. For me, I, actually, this is such very different for me because I don't really listen to K-pop. So this is like my actually somewhat of an introduction to K-pop itself because. I, don't know, I listen to more, I guess, Western and then sometimes more uh, rockish type of music. And I'm like, okay, I was wondering if I'm gonna, I was wondering if, um, if it's if I'm gonna like it or not because it's really such a contrast to uh, like the usual music I listen to. And then I found myself actually enjoying some of the songs. I think Same right with me, yeah. I guess especially since I guess me and Noki, we really like like hip hop music like that rap. So it's, it's like, oh, how will this mesh with it? And I think that some songs, for example, like, I guess, Ride With Me, I really like the hook on that. And then just the, I guess also I do a bit of like production, like some music production, like as a hobby. And I just realized how good, the how it was made, especially like, for example, the reverb backup vocals into it. And then the hook was very good. And then I really like also the synths. Uh, for me, yeah, like what you said, I, I listened to some K-pop before. Like I actually, I who 
got me into it for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, you know, I, I have respect for K-pop. No? Like personally, it's not like what I choose to listen to. But you know, I know how I, I love the bang, GV, GVness, the good vibes of K-pop, and. I got good at and Kali said she listens to it while she studied. Because I feel like, it's so much, isn't it, isn't it hard to it's study? so nice, Kaya. Because if you don't know the lyrics, they, you can just you can have your own it. language. You won't sing along with it. You won't sing along with it. Anyway, yeah. Say, no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, about Kali's playlist, I actually really love Rolling. I mean... Ever since before they blew up as a group, I was actually following them for quite some time, and I'm really happy that they're getting the recognition they kind of deserve. Also, I really like Clans featuring Vori from 88 Rising and Nikki. I feel like it's a really good song to jam to, especially if it's kind of like you're in a beach or you're kind of in a mood, you know, just to chill. So. That's the kind of vibe I got from the entire playlist. But yeah, roll in some of the year. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I guess let's, I want to ask you guys, especially as people who really like listens to music, um, how do you guys consume your music nowadays? Because especially with the advent of, for example, streaming, how do you like, how do you like, for example, um, get your music now? Do you still just, is it all just streaming or do you go still download or even b- try to purchase like the physical stuff itself? Um, For me, I listen to YouTube first and then when I like that song, I buy it on iTunes because I'm making the most out of my iTunes subscription or something. <laughs> so yeah, and I also listen to Spotify because I, um, they create parang playlists made for you, the right? Every week they have those. So parang that's where I get my daily dose of music. Tara, pero yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's how I consume music. Pero I, I all, yeah. Go lang, go lang. Sorry. Go lang, go lang, go lang. Pero same. I get you. I get what you mean when you say YouTube first, because like, like I always use Spotify, but YouTube, I feel like it's such a hack for finding. For finding music like in terms of discovery yeah spotify curates the playlist for you but i feel like youtube the guess um where you find songs na, that are like bangers you know what i mean because like <laughs> and then and then you check if because not everything's on spotify but when every like everything's on yeah. youtube so usually I, like hopefully like when i listen to music on youtube like hopefully i find them on spotify that that's when i I know, like add them to my playlist and stuff. I get so sad though if, like, if I hear a really good song on uh, YouTube and I can't find it on Spotify because yeah. Spotify is where I mainly mm-hmm. listen to music. Yeah. It's either really that true. or like Discord bots, but mostly Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and I don't know, I get so BBs now when I can't find it long. So I usually yeah, yeah. stick to Spotify in the moon now. <laughs> Oh, and like the thing with YouTube is like the live performances. I, I, I like the uh, tiny best. That, that's the, dude, oh. those are so good. Yeah, live yeah. performances just different, especially if they actually have good vocals. Like, parang, they actually sing live, not just lip sing, you know? Like, it's very different. It's a different feel. Sorry, I can feel it, eh. Ganun. Mm-hmm. But in terms of how I consume, like everyone else, I go YouTube first. And then here's the part where it's different. Uh, can I say this <laughs> on the podcast? Like, I have an idea what you're going to say, but go. What do you yeah, like, say? Well, I go to a website. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that well off, so I got to make most of what I can find. And sometimes I want to listen to it offline, and I don't really want to buy Spotify Premium because I rarely use mm-hmm. Spotify in a moment. So I was like, Download, download, download. <laughs> this is what there we is. call practicality. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is what, so I guess for me, I still go on YouTube, but the way I do it is not like, I like, you know, those YouTube recommendations like that. What I do is like, I go on and then look at the review, YouTube reviewers for music because for me, I'm getting, I don't, for me, I want to get as quick as possible as music and like, also get to i don't know like if it's like for example like anthony fantano or something the needle drop or something like dead and hip-hop i always want to just like 
know know what I'm getting into because I feel that I have a, such a huge short attention span at this point that I kind of want to just get as good quality as content as possible and stuff like waiting through something like a mediocre or something like lower. And also for me, I get to like learn new, discover some new music along the way for that. And then, so afterwards I would get it like on Spotify and listen to it there. And then if I really love the project, before like the pandemic happened, I used to collect like CDs and stuff like that. Just so like memorabilia because uh, have you guys ever like opened the like bought a CD right? Or any yeah, physical yeah. reaction? Yeah. So wait, I'll I'll get the one CD right now. I really love. I guess. Ah. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. <laughs> Sound effects, <laughs> uh, so I guess. Okay, got in. Ah, is. See, can you guys see this too here? Yeah. Is that Pusha yeah. T? Pusha T is Daytona. So normally, what I love about this is that the you know like you know like the CDs at the sides there, the like the track list and stuff like that, the credits. Uh, what yeah. I love about it's like there's like artworks and stuff like that. Oh shoot, I got the wrong wrong CD. This one has doesn't have. Wait, this other CD by. Oh, it's, they don't have so good, uh, by the way. Muri... So I always forget her name, but yeah. It's like, there's like some artworks here that are like very, like you get to see the lyrics and also like, I guess you see another layer to the project itself, especially with the albums. Like how they get to envision like their ideas to it there. And then like after the, I'll close my camera first. It's like another layer to their personality, something like a supplementary to it. I think I, that's why I really love about it. And then like once vi once I like in the future, maybe if I have enough money, I'll get, I'll get vinyl already. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's what I'm thinking also. Mahal, eh, mahal to collect vinyl. <sighs> but then it's just yeah. so, I th it looks so cool, like just that. And also this different, you know, it's analog now. Yeah, and the sound quality is a lot better now on vinyl. Supposed to be, yeah. But I want to just see it. Mostly just to also support the artists in a way because, you know, Mm -hmm. Not everything on because they don't earn that much on Spotify compared to like for yeah, example yeah. physical sales. So I really want to like help mm -hmm. them out, especially the ones I really support. And I guess the next part of our discussion would be like, uh, how do you guys like hear new music other than like YouTube? Are you more of like of course word of mouth or reviewers also? Actually, me I whenever I watch a video or anything or an ad or. Or like a TikTok, and I hear the song and it sounds nice. I just that's where I usually get my music, like if it's new or sometimes word of mouth, naman. Like, cause I'm usually on Discord with other friends, and then they play a song, and if it sounds really good to me, then I save it in my playlist. It's usually how I find my new song. Dude, TikTok, like what you read, I feel like, like it's kind of embarrassing to say, but honestly, like TikTok. Like so many songs blew up just because of yeah. TikTok and like I know, really good songs. Now, huh? Yeah, because like if it's good, then it's good. Like yeah, yeah, dude. Even like if honestly, <laughs> I don't know. It. I don't like them how if people hear it on TikTok, they are like, oh, ah, yeah, it's so a you... TikTok song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah if it's true. good, then, if you like it, then you know it doesn't care. It doesn't matter if it's on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, that's facts though. <laughs> so, yeah, that's like what I mentioned. She gets it from like word of mouth also. Uh, like for me, I get it from word of mouth also, like from my friends. I mean, when a new album comes out, we just like tell each other. <laughs> and then, yeah, honestly, TikTok's a good place to find music. And um, in terms of like uh, music reviewers, like Jai, to watch on YouTube, usually I just follow a lot of people on Twitter, like, the uh, debating hip hop accounts or like um yeah yeah all those people now who just review music and then also i think one other way i get new music is from shows like when i hear a good song in a show or in a movie soundtrack. i search the soundtrack right away yeah yeah <laughs> yeah well for me i find new music in 
a unique way. A unique way. Okay, so you know how in Korea and Japan, they have these music shows where every time an artist releases new music, they go to this show and they sing it together. So mm-hmm. that's how I find new music, by watching those kind of shows. I watch it weekly, so... Um, at least in that oh. way, I get new um, knowledge on what's what's the trend, what's new. But aside from that, I also listen to TikTok songs. I don't go to TikTok. I don't go to the platform, but I listen to TikTok songs on Spotify playlist. Like there's this playlist, parang um, TikTok songs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> My TikTok sister songs. plays that. <laughs> <TikTok Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that that's where I get my you know, my new music. So, yeah. Other than that, word of mouth. Then, so that's basically it for me. Uh, for me, naman, I don't really venture out of my comfort zone. Parang if I just listen to main pop, it's just pop, and I follow the artist until I get bored of it, and then I. So, well, ano ano ko ba nakikita yung new music? Well. Actually, sometimes it's the YouTube algo. Like, sometimes may pop-up up sa phone ko, and then I randomly clicked it na hindi ko na malay na, oh, I clicked it, and I didn't notice. Tapos, nag-play siya mag-isa, tapos I realized na, oh, I kind of like this. This is kind of my vibe. And ganun lang. Like, it's so random. Like, sometimes if it's trending, I'll give it a try. Pero most of the times, yeah, I just search it by myself and hope for the best. <laughs> I think I know one song that you got from your recommendation, Plastic Love. Yes, yeah, yes. Plastic yeah. Love. I actually yeah. found it because I, I got so into city pop to the point that uh, I really like Plastic Love. And I have a playlist on YouTube that loops like yeah. city pop songs from Japan and it's kind it's of my guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's but... like one of the things I was talking about, and not everything on Spotify. In my head, I was thinking about City Pop. Because I have a City Pop player, so it's like a YouTube dash. Yeah. Yes, City Pop just gives you a good feel moment, diba? Parang, parang nakaka distress siya. Like, you just want to go for a drive mm. down the street and, you know, feel the cold air, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Buti nga din po sa Plastic Love on Spotify. Uh, after many years, kasi nung when I found City, when I found Plastic Love on YouTube, wala pa siya sa Spotify. So, I have to go to YouTube and listen to it. And yeah. So, yun. That's it. So, mentioning your uh, playlist, we're gonna be going to your playlist now. So, I guess select what song you wanna play this time. Uh, I think you guys know what song I'm playing. <laughs> Segway ko na din. Uh, I'm actually debating when playing Plastic Love or We Ride kasi yun yung pinaka city pop na nagustuhan ko. Na I kind of go back to every now and then. But since this is not a Brave Girls episode, let's play Plastic Love. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so let's dive into your playlist, Jello. So would you ex- uh, kindly explain? Are these like given insight on how you constructed your playlist for this? Uh, so my playlist is basically city pop. <laughs> so all of the city pops that I've listened to and I feel like, you know, you can easily digest it. No matter what kind of genre you guys want or you like. I feel like it's quite enjoyable for everyone. So that's why I pick those particular songs. However, I actually want to add two new songs in the playlist since I thought we just have to do like four songs each. I kind of limited it, so yeah, I'm gonna add two songs. Pero yun nga, it's more more on like, I wanted to be relaxing, you know, kind of distressing, and you just want to have fun and chill on a cold night. <laughs> so yeah. There's one song I did not, ex- I was like, uh, I was like seeing here, there's a song called We're Good by by uh, Dua Lipa, so I didn't know that there was there was a de- deluxe uh, album of her latest her latest one, Future Nostalgia. So, uh, and then I realized when I saw it, I was like, oh shoot, I should just listen to that because I think her album was really good for that case, and I really enjoyed it. It was actually really uh, good, especially uh, Future Nostalgia. Yeah, I mm-hmm. can agree, especially the Moonlight <laughs> Edition. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think it's just the, the, especially that album. I don't know. For me, I did not like Dua Lipa when she came out before because it was not my style of pop. And then once I started listening to that one, it was like it's so different. It's very 80s vibes in a way. And then I guess it was kind of like a, I guess, counterculture in a way of how, you know, uh, pops, pop choruses have been progressing nowadays, especially in Western music. You know, like it's more chill. It is, it's not as like, not heavy mel- melodic as it was before i mean yeah actually that's the reason why i fell in love with city pop because it's not those heavy noise pop because a lot of pops nowadays is like what they call hyper pop yung parang it's borderline noise for me parang nakaka stress gun get this off of my headphones and stuff like that so yeah the moment dua lipa released an all 80s inspired album I went in and I really, really loved it, especially songs like Hallucinate and Levitating. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's really, good. really, really good. Like, you just want to chill and dance, and it's not too much for me to handle. I don't know. How about you guys? Yeah, I, I get you. Piano uh, Jello, is it city pop? I mean, isn't does it have to be Japanese to be considered? city pop i mean city pop started from japanese music but lately there it evolved into its own genre it's like you know the percussions the synths i'm not really much of a music music fanatic so please correct me if i'm wrong but like you can this it is very distinct but the moment you hear it oh it's city pop. It's not supposed to be Japanese. It's not just one culture. Lately, also, there has been a resurgence of city pop in K-pop. So there's that. So I hope it answered naman your question on whether yeah, it's just sure. Japanese. Because I, if you listen in my playlist and We Ride by Brave Girls, it's city pop inspired. So it's basically borderline city pop with their own touch of music so yeah that's it <laughs> yeah even when i listen yeah, to the to cornelia street by taylor shift when you put here i was like then you mentioned that it's city pop i was like oh no it has like a similar sound to it because i always just thought that it had to be japanese to be considered a city pop but yeah thanks for the for educating me <laughs> actually for me when i listen to J- jealous playlist i was on my way home from a checkup and as in the feel ko yung vibes na parang this is this is the 3 a.m. drives uh, long trips whatever you call that as in you got that vibes it you got it from that playlist and it's a really nice genre i actually this is my first time hearing the the term city pop ever so it was really a nice um it's really a nice genre because when i listen to the, these songs i o- i only think of it as pop na um pop na nag resurface ganun kasi 70s 80s vibe siya and now that i know the term i think i'll be adding more songs to my playlist na <laughs> I, I, I really like the genre so yeah thank you for your recommendation zello i really like it you're welcome actually i have more city pop in my playlist but i'm too scared to add kasi like as i said earlier akala ko four lang yung maximum so I added two more. So maybe I'll add more later. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> go add. Go 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 add. This is fine. Uh-huh. I'll add na. I'll add na. Okay. I might sort of like Kali. Like I like how chill the. I like the vibes that it gives. Like yung when you're on a long road trip, and it's like it's just smooth sailing from there. It's like um. Honestly, I'm not good with genres. That's like, I'm, I don't know. I don't know how to tell which one's which. But I, like, understand the, around the, f- how it feels. Like, it's more of how I hear it. And I do like your songs because of the, around the chillness. Nga. So, I guess, um, I'm actually want to post this uh, another question on you guys. Just like, how do you, other than like for song recommendations, how do you like uh, listen to an artist? Do you guys listen by album or mostly by singles? Because 
When I find an artist kasi, and I really like I really like this song, I go to their um like Spotify page and then I click play on the top songs muna. And then uh eventually I ask like if someone cuz usually my brother, I look up to him when it comes to music and cuz he I don't know, he gives like good music um recommendations. And he knows his music, so I ask him if he knows this. And then if he like recommends an album, then I play that whole album. But if uh, if not, I usually just look at the songs. And then if I hear a song that's good, that's when I go to the album of that song. Um. Well, for me, I consume my. I mean, I listen to music projects by singles first. So when I see their music videos sa YouTube, ganyan, or kaya when I see like sa Spotify yung mga pop playlist ganun, or what's the trendy um songs right now. Um from there when I find the song very nice ganun, I go and listen to their album or if ever it's just a single, I listen to the artist's whole discography. <laughs> so that's how dedicated i am to listening to music so that's how i um that's how i listen to music projects from singles then discovering their whole discography <laughs> so yeah actually same like i listen to their lead single and if, I, if i like the vibe of that single and the overall theme of the album i was like i'm gonna give it a go but I rarely listen to an artist full this full album on the first time. I kind of let it sit, you know, if it will age well or if this is another, you know, one trend thing. If you get what I mean, like some artist just puts out music for the sake of the trend, you know, not for the sake of what they want. If you get it, so yeah, I I let it chill for a while before I actually dive into it, because para malaman ko if it will last longer in my playlist or if this is just gonna be a one week then oops deleted <laughs> thing so yon. yeah i got what you guys mean like when you also when you refer to listening to disc- discographies like the um when you listen to artists for their discographies because like champion that's the best way to judge whether or not you like that artist like uh for me recently lang, like in the past um few weeks i've been trying at the I've been making these playlists, in private playlists now for me, where I try to rank like my favorite songs of that artist. So I have playlists na paang top ten Drake, top ten Kanye, stuff like that. Um, and then regarding singles or albums, I guess it really depends on like. Um, I usually I usually only listen to albums when they're newly released, and then what I try to do is like I try to remember. Um, all the all my favorite songs from that album, and then I add them to a playlist. So what I l- usually listen to the most are um, playlists that I make for myself based on albums that I've listened to. I guess for me, normally when I like list when I get into uh, artists, I for of course I'll check out first the the singles first, especially like especially those like recommended by some people. Check it out, and then afterwards I immediately go straight now to the album itself. Because for I don't know, for me it's just that uh, when I listen to albums, I always I want to check out how they how they progress. I guess you know like how like the structure of the album stuff, like the intros and then the mids and then the ends of it. Because uh, that's I don't know. Because for me, the album is such it's like the complete package of the project. Like where's this artist's mind state in this point? What is his like preferences? What's his um, like his um, hobbies or dislikes because especially like in for example rap music like you get like especially those who focus more on the writing aspect of rap it's very it's very personal in the way how they talk about their lyrics you know like there's a certain personality like some of their quirks and the way they do it anyways um we'll be taking a short break i hope you listen to these few messages need something to start your day or some background music to study to you. Then why not check out LSCS playlist on Spotify? Check out the playlist curated by the LSCS officers to get you through quarantine. Search up LSCS playlist on Spotify or visit the link in the description below. Now back to our regular programming.
The views and opinions of the hosts and resource persons do not represent those of the organization, the university, and its stakeholders. Viewer discretion is advised. Back to the back to the thing. We'll be going into my playlist now. I guess, huh, which one should I pick? This is the scary one, because... <laughs> scary. Uh, I, I don't know. I just, scary. Uh, I'll, ex I'll, I'll explain it later about my playlist. But the song is um, Checkpoints by Billy Wood and produced by Kenny Siegel. Okay, so that's basically one of the songs in my playlist. I guess, I don't know how to describe my playlist. These, I guess... Normally, like when I make playlists for people, it's so hard for me to like choose because I think my music taste has gone to left field already in terms of that. Because, oh, because the way I listen to it, because like when you like uh, what Jello mentions that she didn't like hyper pop, and I just check my playlist. Oh shoot, I had one hyper pop song there already. <laughs> so it was the Charlie X C X's. Um, it's a class, so it's like, oh no. And then the rest of the songs are, of course, very, like, I guess not what you normally listen to in a way. So more of it's like, like the song we played recently was more abstract abstract rap. Like, you, like, we have to really listen to the songs there. And then I guess more of it's hardcore rap. And then I guess, what's this have here? Have like dubs, like dubstep. Um, Japanese, um, is this Japanese hardcore punk, and then some, uh, I, get, I think it's something like, maybe it's like folk, I'm not sure about what uh, the song The Greatest by Lana Del Rey is, but it's like, I guess I, those are the things I've been listening to nowadays, and then it's like, uh, I'll just like for this podcast, I'll just like say, okay, I'm gonna just give out my, what I normally listen to, and then see what other people like, so, you know. Uh, what you guys think of it? Okay, I'll defend myself. <laughs> uh, the hyper pop by Charlie XX Claus. I actually listened to it, and it's not that grating. Naman, it's kind of good. <laughs> yeah, it's not that grating to my ear. So yeah, I think it passed. I mean, when I said I don't really like hyper pop, it's not every hyper pop. So please don't come for me. <laughs> 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 yeah, fair, yeah. I kind of respect that your playlist a lot. It's quite different from what I normally gravitate towards, but yeah, I can see why you're enjoying those type of music. So, yeah. <laughs> what kind of mood do these songs are going to put you in? What do you usually do when you listen to, when you listen to dark? rap songs not, not gonna lie i don't think of it as dark rap music i just listen uh, casually so like when i wake <laughs> up in the morning i have that already on like okay oh because for example like um the song i just recently played for you guys so it's so there's no like central theme to the entire song but then there's just so much like i guess uh what you call it like there's so much personality especially there's so much references like for example there's this line there says, like, came home like a conquo at the end, at the end, just quit. You know, this book, uh, Things Fall Apart, if ever. If ever. So that was a reference to the, there's a reference to this um, character there who, who, it was like a book about colonialism in a way. So like, a conquo came in back because he was like, kind of like exiled for a while. He came back to his village and realized how, how his tribe has changed when the missionaries came in. And then he was trying to rally back everyone in his village to fight off against the colonial the colonialists. But then no one supported him. So at the end, just quit. So, you know, like 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 quit on all your things. And then there's another line here, it's like, why do you finally in that spaceship like so long and thanks for all the fish? So that's like a reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is a very nerdy book about you know time travel. Uh, about uh, the the earth blowing up. Uh, make way for like a highway place. So it's like, I don't know, for me, like those type of music is very, I think it has so much personality of the artist in a way when it comes to that music, especially like, it's something like the abstract people, abstract rap artists, you know, like Billy Wood in that way. And then, I don't know, I don't know hardcore rap because I came off of like 90s rap in a way. 
you know, like the Nine Strap is more hardcore focus, you know, Wu Tang, um, Nas, like that. So that's why majority of the rap I listen to sounds like that, in a way. Yeah. Uh, I get you though, like, like especially as someone who's also a fan of hip hop, I am. To me, even though I don't listen to the same songs, bang, there's always a. I just always think that there's always um, a right time or a right moment where you can listen to these songs, and it will, where it will like really um, set you in a certain type of mood that you want to feel. Um, and then you mentioned a really good point then about like lyrics and lyricism. Um, I think that's what, for me, I think that's what separates like um, that's what separates like a great artist from from those artists who just know how to make catchy songs it's like mm -hmm. if you can actually put meaning to the words that you're saying and not just you know um say say words that rhyme or say words that are catchy right? if you can actually make it mean something i think that's where um you know that's where you become like really an artist rather than just a musician personally i there's this one song from what you added that i really liked and it was the Japanese one. Sibu play. Sibu yeah. play. Sibu play. play. There, yeah. I when I heard that, the, so I like the um. I don't know. I really liked how it felt like an anime intro. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Actually, yes. Yes. <laughs> it was so. I don't know. It was so hype, and it felt like um. I don't know. I like the vibes that it gave. Yeah. You might you might like the artist. I don't know. For me, maybe you might not like it because the rest of their songs is very noisy afterwards. It's this is like their more tame version of their songs. Oh. Uh, let's like do, you can check it out after. Uh, well, for me, I have one comment lang sa ano playlist ni Jar. It was diverse. I think sobrang <laughs> one moment parang you're kind of in the mood na parang. Oh, this is a soft song with Blana Del... What, what's the name? Sorry. Blana Del <laughs> oh, with, Yeah, with Blana Del Rey's song. And then the next moment, hip-hop na siya. And then the next moment, biglang Charlie XCX. And then sa susunod naman, biglang the Japanese um, anime vibe song. So far, when I listen to the place, parang, whoa, this is different. Parang ganang vibe. Parang I really liked it. The way it's so diverse, but at the same time, it's it has a common factor. Na parang it's cool, ganun. It's diverse, but it's cool. So that's my main takeaway, and I liked it. Uh, let's move on to Iris music already. Okay, so I pick a song. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know which. Oh, my song. Okay, this song. Uh, the song I'll play. It's kind of different. I mean. Maybe no one really knows it at that, but maybe you guys might enjoy it if you're into big Japanese music. <laughs> so that's how I'm playing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so that was my song. Honestly, what got me into this song so much was like the music video because oh, the art was so cute, the animation. But like, <laughs> I like the song itself because there's like a drop after a pause in the middle of the song. And that like that part, it just made my heart like melt or something. Like I felt, <laughs> I don't know, it felt so nice for me when I heard that part. And... Uh, after I heard this song, I listened to like um, the discography nga, of the of Eve, because this guy he also did like the intro of one of the biggest animes right now. Actually, he's it's pretty it's a pretty big anime. Like if you know, it's like Jujutsu Kaisen, and it like won so many awards at that. And yeah, yun lang. <laughs> I uh, the so my playlist pala. It's a bit of, um, honestly, everything that I uh, listen to because um, I don't really have a certain genre and I go from this to that like super fast, but I just got some and then I place them. <laughs> so there's not really much of a theme 
in the songs that I play. I think it's. I think I was the only person who put an OPM song, which we should we should be ashamed of. Because <laughs> none of us put OPM. Oh, put OPM yeah. at that. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. OPM doesn't have city pop yet, so that's why I did that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I actually wanted to put that, but I was like, okay, should I do it for the sake of OPM or should I not put it for the sake of the theme? So yeah. Okay, yeah. Also, I actually like Iris playlist. Like it's what I gravitate towards if I'm not so into city pop. Especially I use songs and John Legends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Bruno Mars is actually really, really good. You know, the new song, Leave the Door Open. Yeah. It makes me feel things. It makes me miss some things that Ooh. I am not allowed to say. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, no. Because... When I was actually wanted to talk about, I couldn't stop listening to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, too good, so. too good. <laughs> and the Shinkai song that you just played, it just felt like, you know... Spring, you know, it's very refreshing, you know, hot, hot summer day. It's kind of like that vibe for me. So, Ayon. with your podcast, I mean podcast, with your playlist, sorry, uh, I really enjoyed it, especially because I don't know, it has also some vibes that I listen to that very, like comfy vibes with it, like a bit of that indie sound, like I don't know, like like the cloudiness, like cloudyish, relaxing type of music that I really like also. Cause that's I don't know because I got I got that from like my dad when he used to play music in the car, and that's like the usual music I gravitate to when I'm like trying to chill, like more chill than what I normally listen to. So yeah. Well, for me, naman, I love um Ira's playlist. Cause um when I started the playlist, the first song that played was um the Bruno Mars song "Leave the Door Open," and. To be honest, LSS ako sa song na yun kasi I saw it on TikTok. <laughs> I saw it on TikTok and then I was like, what you doing? What you do? <laughs> I kept on singing. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? <laughs> yeah, so I kept on yes. singing that as in like yesterday, I kept on say- singing that. So yun, when I started the playlist, I was like, I like it already. <laughs> that was when I listened to the next songs. Um... The next song was Shinkai. The first thought that crossed to my mind was para siyang your name. Uh, Something, <laughs> mga your name soundtrack, yeah, yeah. ganyan. So far, wow. I wanna watch it. I wanna watch it again to loy ganun. <laughs> the other <laughs> song. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I will take it any day. <laughs> it's worth. It's worth. Yes. <laughs> and I, I just wanna say I love that you put Ayu. On your playlist, because I love IU so much. Okay, just, that's just the K-pop um, girl in me. So that's it. I really like the playlist. I would definitely listen to your playlist. Kapag I wanna drift away from the pop scene or the K-pop um, type of music. So yeah, I really liked it. Yeah, congrats. Eh, congrats. <laughs> yeah. Congrats on making a nice playlist. <laughs> Thank uh, you. It's so really. funny, talaga. Like, <laughs> we also did El Gloria at the house. I was just like, what you doing? It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> the part of the song so good. <laughs> Scaring of my friends, because like, oh, when it came out, I was so happy because I love Bruno Mars. And yeah. when I heard it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this a lot in Discord. Yeah. And then my friends are like, oh, yun na si Ira. Yun na yung leave the door open niya. <laughs> it's a good song. I did like it, so it's fine. Basta talaga leave the door open. Makes me feel things. Ako si Jello. I'm not mentioning things. 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 Every day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zoom. Pin play, pin play, gonna. pin and play. Gonna. So, crush, if you're listening to this podcast, alam mo na. 
What you doing now? Where are you at? Where are you at? That's open for you. <laughs> well, well, it is open. I mean, open oh, your oh. door and open your bed. Oh. Yeah. You know, man, you know me. Oh well, basically everyone kind of what said what I feel about ISP is so super good vibes lang din. and then um, I super got what Kali said when she mentioned that similar to reminds of your name you know, I like I just play this congrats then I cannot I congrats based on like everyone's music I guess um, so far most of the music is now like K-pop and rap so I guess the next topic of discussion is like music trends nowadays and I will go first to rap since I think um, because I feel that that's the most it's such a weird thing to like notice that rap has gone so popular now because remember back in like we were in grade school and high school it used to be like no one listens to rap before it was all just like rock music pop music and then when you see it now it's it became so popular even though people used to say that's not music and stuff like that like in the states now like oh, yeah. um how people say that rap is really the it's like the new pop i heard people a lot of people say that that's really the more mm-hmm. yeah like rap is the new mainstream music in the states compared to pop um and like i don't know jared i think people just grew an appreciation for rap because of uh the lyrics the lyricism and like the culture then the culture of young of young people like us nowadays na super um i don't know like we, we like to get high <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we like we like to dance and you know um not necessarily rap but like hip-hop like that's why i think a lot of people started gravitating towards that type of music because it's just fun and a lot of people like to have fun but you know i guess i'm, I'm kind of generalizing I mean, I'm not. I think I'm talking about a specific portion of rap, but like, the, I don't know. When when I say rap and hip hop, I think of you, mga. At least the first thing that comes to mind is mga party songs, you know, like they, like Lil Yari, Lil Uzi, yeah, people are just like that. Jared, this rap kaya before yung Nicki Minaj. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a Nicki Minajer. Nicki Minaj. Ay ano ba? Sabi mo ba yung bully me? Ang Nicki Minajer na LSTF. Oh my god. Ay yung mga. Minaj. Hashtag Ira Nicki Minajer. Let's make it trend guys. Okay, <laughs> naman po. Anyways, like, uh, rap for me. I, I really enjoy rap because I like songs um, with that are in lyrics. If the lyrics are fast and, like, the beat is, like, nice and chill. And, like, I don't know, before pa, yung mga, when Nicki Minaj exploded nga, that's when I started, like, um, Becoming a Nicki Minaj. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love songs that are fast and I like memorizing them. So I love rapping with it. And I don't know, I found it so much fun. Uh, memorizing raps. Because I have a really bad memory. and But apparently when it's rap, I, I can memorize it. Naman. So I have fun learning that. And well, uh, like those songs with stories, they they really get to me. Mm. I like listening to those because I like, like do things like draw. For me, I want to going to like Noki's point about like rap music. Like rap music is getting popular because of the lyrics. For me, I think it's the op. I think it's the opposite. For me, it's not the lyrics. I think it's just that. Uh, not just oh, uh, there's of course bar, some aspects of it is the lyricism, like for example Kendrick Lamar in that sense, like KJ Cole, Logic, and stuff like those people who are focused more on like um, what I call it uh, more on lyricism. But then I think what made it like the mainstream is like the like the advent of trap music and that you know like the so unquote unquote mumble rap in a sense. 
Uh, because I think just rap was able to we call it, like it was able to adapt to the climate of where we are right now, which is like a short attention span, very catchy music. And then another thing about rap is that not everyone can sing, but in terms of but in rapping, everyone can rap. It's not it's not as like difficult of a task for a music team in a way. Uh, Honestly, for me, I feel like I don't know rapping. I don't find rapping like as easy as singing the manyan but like I feel like it's still hard because you have to keep like a uh a, a note like even if it's not like yung belting when you sing it's like you still have to keep the um what do you call that <laughs> the tone and like how near fast you say you rap ganun yeah, but I feel like a lot of rappers, no man, they don't, they just have nice voices. So they don't just think about. Yeah, that's honestly, it's a gift if you have a nice voice. It's like instant, I know, instant hacks if you want to be a rapper. <laughs> yeah, I think like, they're like, cheating. Like Tiny the Creator, yeah, dude, the hack. Like Tiny the Creator. Unfair. Oh my God, his voice. Yeah, man. the deep, <laughs> the deep raspy voice. Yeah, yeah, hacks. <laughs> I have to, I know, back up Ira for what she said, Kadina. Because what got me into rap was Nicki Minaj. Then, not a Nicki Minaj. Because the first, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the first rap that I memorized was Starship. Mm. The, the rap is Starships. This one's for the boys. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what it is. <laughs> uh, oh. It's another song. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Nicki Minaj yeah. song, so yeah, yeah. you know it. Alright, that's far from there. So far, I'm like widening knowledge about the rap scene. That's I started listening to Eminem. Tapos, yes, like, Eminem. Right, what you ba? Like right now, I'm listening to um, Post Malone. Kanyan, you are trending na rappers kanyan. Because I'm not really much of that. Um, inter- not really interested, pero um, not into the rap scene talaga. So, whenever a rap song gets so much attention, that's when I listen to it and I, and I see na parang, oh, I get why it gets this kind of attention. Kasi, to be honest, rap nowadays is super nice. As in, when you listen, lalo na pag yun nga yung sinabi kanina na maganda yung bosses ganyan, parang, ooh, I like this guy, I like this rapper. <laughs> so yun, parang, it's just so amazing how rap has evolved. Taray, pero it's so amazing talaga kung paano from super bass to star from super bass and starships, naging parang, whoa, it blew up, ganun. So, yeah, that's my thoughts now on the rap scene. Uh, just to add... You want to hear But, yeah, about the rap, entirety, I actually listened to Eminem when they will collab, when he collabed with Rihanna. Oh, uh, Love the Way You Like. Love the Way. Uh, I, I that. love that song. I played that song so much and I memorized it. Like, the whole song. I would sing it all the time before. And people would, and people know the lyrics, right? so they sing along with me and it's just like, we all just vibe together. And I find that so cute love for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that was one of my main rap entries, and then everything just went on. Lalo na yung mainstream, mainstream pop artists and rap music. Yeah, if you heard <laughs> <laughs> the people in the back and they're laughing. Yeah. The people in the back, <laughs> rap, please get a rap for me. You know? <laughs> But uh, yeah, I don't really listen much as much of rap scene. But uh, like, is Cardi B considered like? Yeah, yeah. Like her, her two songs that stuck with me was Up and Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, wow. TikTok brought me wow. to rap. Yeah, it's really catchy. If it's like rap, 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 it's like rap, rap. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
That was Megan Thee Stallion. Actually, I listened to her, especially Savage with Beyonce. I also found that through TikTok as well. Yung Savage, then she collabed with Beyonce and Doja Cat. Actually, dahil kay Harley Quinn, nalaman ko si Doja Cat and Doja Cat Boss B was one of my. I don't know if you consider it rap, but like one of the rap-ish songs that I kind of listen to. <laughs> rap-ish. Rap-ish, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think you could definitely consider those artists as rappers, especially uh, like Megan. Um, I don't know, I feel like she's really one of the best new rap artists on the scene because she's so... Um, well, know, she's so talented. Bayang. She doesn't really... She's, she's not an artist about you know her, her yeah. whole social media whatever she's not like that thanks she just likes to make music yeah and, yeah, and to quote music too. and to quote megan i'm a savage <laughs> pretty <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm for I'm that so much. <laughs> but yeah megan and also i i like to shout out lizzo i don't know if it's actually rapping but some of her songs in her album is kind of rap for me Because she raps sometimes in her music, especially in, what's the title? I forgot. Oh, God, wait. I have to search it. Truth. Oh, truth. Something with truth. Wait, I'm on Spotify right now. Truth. Truth, truth, truth hurts. hurts. Yeah, truth hurts. Yeah. Hey, Lizzo. Yeah. Especially when after you have a falling with your someone... You know, truth hurts just kicks different now. Oh. <laughs> crush, crush, at crush. At palagi, yeah. For me, what I love most about rap, not just like the surface level of the mainstream rap, but just the the underground scene of rap is so different. It's actually like, for me, that's my favorite place to go to for rap because that's where the innovation comes in with the music. I think like, for example, like Brockhampton in a way, I think that their their sound is sounds so different from what is the mainstream, and I think that might set in the next trend in rap afterwards, just the production skills and stuff like that. And then also the like the other like for example, the music I had placed there was like you know the like Billy Woods in a way is just this different the different approaches to rapping. It's just not always just what you'd normally listen to on mainstream. I guess it's like. I don't know, for the way their flow is are different now. The evolution, how rap um, started to sound differently, you know, because like the 90s is very, you know, dun, 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 and then multi-syllable stuff. And then we approach now, it's that the triplet flow style. And then when you go to like something even down to the, I guess the underground scene, you have like spoken word style of rapping already, which I think I really love about it. Uh, I guess that way. Uh, that's the way to like end the topic. But let's move on to the next uh, rising star, which is of course K-pop. And I guess Kelly, would you like to start off the conversation? That well, um, to be honest, okay, I started um, getting into K-pop back um, on 20, 2016, ganon. So I kind of have an adequate knowledge on K-pop, and I must say. That nowadays, sobrang laki ng attention na nakukuha ng K-pop globally, um, probably because of the rising K-pop stars sa uh, um, Western media ganon. So it's really nice that it's getting a lot of attention, because these artists have trained, they have this parang training program, training system before you become an artist, and some artists train for um, five years. Five to ten years, ganon. So the dedication they put to making music, talaga, has really paid, um, paid off. Lalo na sa attention nga na nakukuha nila ngayon. So ayon. Um, I mean personally, ah, uh, um, I really like the groups Seventeen, BTS, Twice. You know the mainstream, um, K-pop, the trending K-pop, K-pop group. So other than that. I must say that K-pop has really is not really a genre, because eh. parang it's K-pop has yeah, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have rap, 
you have pop songs, you have ballads, ganun. So it's parang a mix of all genres. And that's what I like about it. It's diverse, but at the same time, it has this parang Korean identity. So how about you, Ira? I heard that you're a K-pop fan. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I mean, I was super into 17 before even Noki knows about this. Because I would always play... <laughs> I always play like K-pop, but then mostly Seventeen, and I would talk about it with him. But like, yeah, uh, um, now I only listen to like whatever my friends play or like if they show me. But I'm like, uh, <laughs> I was I was super into K-pop before because of how like, uh, yeah, diverse it is nga. Cause like you know how, um. I like rap and then I also like the singing yung ballads and like in in an album there's actually like one of each usually the, like uh there's a there's a ballad and then there's a like just full on rap hip hop and wala yung mga dance songs so I like usually kasi I like the dance songs only if I see the dance and it's super good. Like mm-hmm. I enjoy watching the dances because of K-pop. That's what like got me hooked because of how well it's so satisfying to the eyes. Since I like watching dances, Ren, like hip hop dance. Uh, I'll add since I also listen to an adequate amount of K-pop. Uh, for me, I really like the artist IU. Uh, Jesse, Brave Girls, Stan Brave Girls, guys, you won't regret it. Uh, stun, <laughs> stun Me, and I don't really like the newer K pop groups. I'm really sorry. Like, yeah, it's kind of catchy, but after a while, you just want to delete it from your playlist and, you know, not really bother with it anymore. And one of the K pop groups I like is SNSD, but I like their older songs. Because when I was younger, I. I would hear that everywhere. And recently, Tiffany Young. Yes, Tiffany. <laughs> with her song, Magnetic Moon, it's not really city pop, but it's more of like a mixture of experimental that, you know, it captivates you in a different way. It's very aesthetic as well. It's really pleasing. I think that's why K-pop boomed. And I would like to add a fun fact. Um, before, and I was like grade 10, I have a thesis paper centered around K-pop. The dedication? Yes. <laughs> oh. What's the study on? <laughs> About yeah, how students really like, how do they consume K-pop and how it affects them in a way if it interferes with the Filipino culture. That's the main gist of it. But I, the title is quite different, but like, you get the point. Naman na. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people said that K-pop was kind of different towards what the OPM scene was releasing at the time. Since during those times, it's like 2017, I was grade 10, there was quite a drought of OPM music in the scene and pop scene wasn't really thriving either. It's really bad. I don't think about, I don't know about rap, but yeah, it was K-pop's prime at those moments because like, Everyone was listening to it. Everyone was so hyped about Blackpink. You can hear it twice almost every day and Red Velvet as well. So yeah, about that. That's about it. You know, that's why a lot of people, I felt like, gravitate towards K-pop mm. as a genre. Uh, actually, when... I, I like the ad green because I'm not a real big fan of like uh repetition. It's like one of my biggest pet peeves when it's just can you if it's just a word repeating and repeating and usually can, can you drop yeah. some songs? I have a then, few. <laughs> I, mean, I mean like in general, even if it's not in songs, if I hear something like this, if they just say it over and over again or like if something happens over and over again i get so annoyed but then usually in k-pop the way there's like that i don't i don't know i don't yeah. get that 
annoyance. Probably because yeah, of the dance. Yeah, <laughs> most of the songs of K-pop, if you just plain listen to it without looking at their performance, yeah. it's one word repeat. Repeating with different background music. <laughs> it's like different because when you watch it. So yeah, I, I think it's I part of the that. experience. If people really want to go mm-hmm. towards K-pop, it's not just music. You have to watch it for you to understand what's happening. Because the first time I actually watched K-pop, I was like, "Why are there twenty-seven people on the stage?" You know, like <laughs> why is there thirty people? I was like. What's happening? Sobrang dami nila. Like, did they get to sing all at mom, once? You know? Mom dance. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, basically NCT. Like, there's so many. <laughs> like, how? Diba? Like, all of those things. Uh, Noki, would you like to add anything? Since we're not as much as, we're not as much into K-pop. <laughs> This sounds so bad, was, but I feel like I, I won't contribute any good weights to that when they talk about like, K-pop. Because I was going to say it's like, oh yeah, they're good. They're good at that. <laughs> say it. Which is true. I'm not, I'm not belittling them. I'm just saying, you know, I don't know it. Yeah. It's but all I know is that they, they're really good. Um, they're really think... talented artists. <laughs> I think K-pop is more of an entertainment rather than the actual meaning behind the songs. Like their goal, their entire goal is to entertain people, naman. So yeah, yeah. I think Especially that's the fan service. Mm-mm, the fan service. <laughs> that's one of their selling points. So if you're not into that, I can really see why. Especially if looking at the playlist, every especially Jared's playlist, it has like a deeper meaning to it. And K-pop is just words. <laughs> it can speak sometimes, yeah. yeah. But like, I I get what you mean, naman. Yeah, please, you mga fandom jan don't come for us. We, we're just like. Rod. <laughs> <laughs> um. Just trying to add on a bit, I guess I was also trying to understand how come like uh, K-pop is getting popular, and I read and I found this video. Uh, it's something similar to what Kali said about how K-pop is con- is like constructed. There's so many different like transitions and layers into the songs in that. So there's like a rap part, there's gonna be a bridge, and it is all designed in a way that it's very catchy. That's what makes like I guess K-pop so good, and then like it's so dominant with our you know. With our music taste nowadays, is because it's just it's it's designed in a way to catch your attention at every single point of it. There's like no dull moments in it. Mm. Uh, I've been, I kind of like studying on it, I guess, because really me, I'm not not really lis- I don't listen to K-pop as much. I think if ever this was really my introduction into the genre. I, yeah, people uh, seeing that there's a formula for it. For yeah, K-pop. yes, yes. Actually, para ano? I don't know if you guys know, but like. It's similar to Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas. Like, there's a certain formula that gets people hooked. I mean, if you listen to a lot of K-pop songs, it's gonna be like, intro, verse one, then Mm -hmm. a sudden rap part, beat drop, (laughs) a dance break, and then you have the ending high note that's always like, even a boy group would do a high note just for the sake of it. But they do it good, man, so... Yeah. You got the formula right. Yeah, I think people <laughs> yeah. people enjoy that, like how it's so um safe or like uh, catchy and stuff. You know? Yeah, but there are some K-pop songs now. It's kind of deep. It's not just surface level. Uh, one of the examples I would actually give is BTS on Tru- Truth Untold. I don't know if you guys listen to it. But it's kind of mm. sad song. Because I was looking for broken-hearted songs at one point in my life, and <laughs> I stumbled upon Ooh. the truth untold, and I was like, "It's a really good K-pop song." And, and the meaning behind the words, if you English translate, because there's a lot of like music video with English translations you can find with lyrics. So yeah, the meaning of the song was like, "Wow, it was." <laughs> It hurts. <laughs> so yeah. And that's why you should stand BTS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like promo. <laughs> Let us move on to the next part of this uh, song. So Noki, can you give us the last so- last uh, choices now? Okay. 
Um, I'm sorry, guys. I might kill the mood. It's a very sad song, but I want to play it just because I love the song so much. Uh, Black Miller. Is it that? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I'll tell you after this school. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, so yeah, yeah, as you can tell, it's a really sad song. Um, but the reason I chose this song is like because of the way I curated my playlist. Um, you know, unlike, I didn't really make it in a way that it's a playlist that you should listen to. It, not that you can listen to um, musically, it's more of just a playlist of uh, the songs that mean the most to me. And like I was mentioning a while ago, how I think songs with meaning are what separate them from, are what make them great. Yeah, yeah. And then with this song specifically, I just have like a story about it because when it came out, um, I was at the beach with my friends and like, we were like so tired the night before and it came out. I only found out in the morning, you know, that when it came out. And Mac Miller is like my favorite artist ever. Like I would say, like him and Childish Gambino, they're my two favorite artists ever. And Payang, um, Payang, it was like years now, like a few years or like a year after he passed away when this song came out. And so when I, when I heard it came out, Payang, I was like, because there were rumors that he was working on a project before he passed away. And then, you know, when the song came out, I was like with my friends, yeah. And then when we when I listened to the YouTube dude, I, I couldn't stop crying till I got just because of how, like I was watching the visuals, pa, and like the lyrics, and it was just so sad to hear his voice. And then I watched it six more times, and I cried six more times <laughs> because, of the, because of the song. And then, you know, I just found it crazy, like, how bang, years after his passing, he yeah, still had this um, effect on me. And, like, although I don't necessarily relate to the um, message of the song, it made me think about how artists really, um, we, may, we might think that bang, they have it all again, but really, um, they go through their own struggles as well and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, and then that's why the other songs I have in my playlist are kind of similar to that. So, for example, like Soundtrack to My Life by Kid Cudi. It's just him talking about his struggles about growing up. And then the reason why it's so important to me then is actually the first um, rap song that, for my first favorite rap song that I ever listened to, like first year high school. And first song that I memorized fully because it's just so catchy, so nice to rap along with it. And then... Um, I also put Rex Orange County, a song about being sad. So, yeah. um, that is so good. It's not rap, but then, you know, I just like um, listening to that song with my girlfriend. Um, because all this, all these songs are like, you know, they're not, they're just songs that like mean a lot to me. You know? <clears throat> and then, um, the last two, um, Bahar, Bahar, Helen Back. Uh, and then, how long do I have to wait for you? Those are just songs that, um, although they don't mean that much to me, they're, they're the songs that I listen to the most now because they're so good. Um, anyway. And then, yeah, I just wanted to play good news because it's really like, um, Mayang, it represents um, everything that I try to look for when I'm looking for good music. Yeah, I'm sorry if I killed the vibe. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I will say the. Uh, okay, I'll say this though. When I saw your playlist and I saw good news, I'm like, oh no, I'm dreading it because I knew the song was going to be sad. And then I'm like, oh man, am I. Because I was planning to listen to it at a, a certain point because I was a bit uh, not that in a mood for that because, you know, a bit, I guess, yeah, yeah. a bit t- sad. I'm like, I don't want to listen to it because of that. I was like, it might affect me very emotionally. Then finally, You've presented it in the playlist, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm actually gonna listen to this finally. Because <laughs> I knew, because yeah, I heard I about the song it. from like, um, like for example, Fantano. Uh, Anthony Fantano. He cried, he so cried much on also. He cried I was so much like, much. Oh. when I saw that, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my god, I don't want to listen to this yet. I'm not not mentally prepared for that moment. So it's like when I was finally I got around and listening to it in the playlist, I'm like, man, this is super sad because like. Oh, because there's two things that I noticed from the song is just that, of course, it was so optimistic, and but it was just, it was sad, but it was trying to be, you know, like optimistic with himself like that. And I'm yeah. like, hey. 
and the, and the music was so happy, was trying to be happy, but you know what happened with Mac was like, shoot, it's so, it's painful to think, you know, this is what he was going through and he still put his, you know, feelings on wax and stuff like that. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. Like, uh, I have to listen to his album. I just haven't found the, like, the mental like, capacity, like the emotional capacity to just listen to it at that point. <laughs> Can I yeah. add something? Can I say yeah. something? Go, go, About go. No Kiss playlist. I, I don't know if I'm gonna kill the vibe that you vibe with, but No your sad boy, guys. Yeah, I also to say that. Sad boy, see No Kiss. No, that's why, I put, that's why I put the last two songs. I was looking at the songs. But I was like, why are people are gonna be concerned for me after they see this? <laughs> When I heard your playlist, I actually, it's kind of good. It's like, you just want to vibe with it, you know? You don't want to think too much. You just want to vibe. It's such a vibe. But that's it. Noki is a sad boy, guys. Ah, that's nah, it. It's just the music. It's just the music. But yeah, it, it was a good playlist. It was really cohesive, though. Like, props to you. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. ano. Yeah. I actually, I actually, when I was listening to the playlist, I was playing Genshin, so I didn't really know what which song is playing. And then Mac Miller song came on, and I was like, I really want it. I want this song in my actual playlist. So I have to go through the entire playlist again till I found the song. I was like, oh, it's Mac Miller. It's Ariana's. You know, you know the entire story about with Ariana Grande. Yeah. So I heard about him so much. Yeah. But yeah, it was actually a good song. I actually also put good news in my sad playlist. Because, <laughs> I don't know, the, I, I enjoy sad songs a lot. Like, I don't know, for me, I don't know, it's a good feeling to like let it out. And, and songs, sad songs, they help it, like, like they help you feel what you feel. I don't know, they amp up your emotions good on I don't know that's how I feel when I listen to sad songs especially when I'm sad so like I just cry my eyes out <laughs> good on. so yeah I really like that song because it was so uh, I just not I felt it love <laughs> and I also like the Rex I, I like the Rex <laughs> um, I gotta say when I listened to Nuki's playlist, parang I felt sad all of a sudden. <laughs> you got <laughs> vibes. As in, parang, Dude, I really was not <laughs> for that. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, pero, it was nice. Parang, I was thinking of, oh wait, paano ba ako maging malulungkot? Paano ba ako maging malungkot? Kasi parang, I want to be sad. Para, you know, ganun. <laughs> hindi ko hindi ko alam. Oy, pero di, di talaga ako sad person. As as Jared and I, I'm not the sad person. Mm-hmm. In no face to face, but as always, I'm so loud, yeah. And you know, I try to smile a lot. This is the yeah, other yeah. side of Nuki, mm-hmm. the sad boy. No, no, no. <laughs> I think I met the sad boy part also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, everyone yeah. has that side, no yeah. right? So. Yeah. Pero ang natutunan natin sa podcast is Ira is a Nicki Minaj <laughs> oh and Nuki sad boy. So may dalawa hashtag na tayo, guys. And ikaw ay anak, di ba? Ikaw ay anak. And Jello has a crush and another. Yeah. <laughs> crush? <laughs> crush. If you're listening, my end up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can you know my ear? That's okay. And that, to be clear, that's your brother, the ba? No, that's my pamangkin. Ah, your pamangkin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, just to let the audience know. Kaya pa po ako guys, wala po ako anak. Wala pa po, wala pa po sing sing. No ring yet. The door is still open. The door is still open. Or cry. I guess uh, to conclude the podcast, I would say I would like to thank everyone for the pod, for their playlist. It was very like I got to learn us like explore some new music, and it's very enlightening from all of your like the reasonings and why you crafted those and what 
and like the genres and then the things that you discover from it. Um, I guess before we end the podcast, would you like to give any recommendations for songs that for other people to listen to? That's not in the in the playlist. Me, me, me. I know it's I don't don't want to be a sad boy, but if you are gonna listen to Mark Miller, um, if you want to know more about like how he was, um, if you want to get into his headspace when he was, you know. Um, towards basta, basta. if you want to get into yeah. this listen to Swimming and Circles the, the albums his last two albums yes so for me I'll go next I added for you City Pop-ish songs it's a playlist if you guys want to check it out and I also added the wild card because my favorite is Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift so you guys definitely have to check it out Stand brave girls. Let me remind you guys. Stand brave girls. <laughs> I mean, because like, just for clearance sake, I'm pushing brave girls so much this entire podcast. Just because the day before they boom, the Roland that Kelly played earlier, they were on the verge of disbanding. So, parang kung hindi nang yari yung araw na yon, they disbanded already. Parang they're already planning towards leaving the group. So it was like. A hail mary for the entire group so please guys stand on and ayon listen to future nostalgia by dua lipa chromatica and uh ko plug ko? <laughs> listen to ben and ben ayon if you guys mm-hmm. if you guys want to be in the opm <laughs> like, like ben and follow ben. up yeah it was ben and ben and i forgot the other moira if you guys wanted to be like sad boy Noki, Moira, Ben and Ben. <laughs> that is, uh, there's a lot of good OPMs out there. I couldn't cover everything, but yeah, that's about it for me. So, yeah. Well, for me, I, okay, despite my love for K pop, um, if you see my playlist, there's this song from 88 Rising, and I highly recommend you guys to listen to them. Um, they they have pop songs, they have rap songs. It's a mixture of both. So, parang if you wanna vibe talaga, as in chill lang ganon, listen to 88 Rising. Super solid nila, and I actually listen to them when they when I study. So yun, yeah, listen to them. How about you, Jared? In my case, uh, I'll give two. One is like a bit normal, the other one is the weird one. I guess the first one would be Brockhampton's new album. What is the title again? Uh, Roadrunner, New Light, New Machine. I think it's their best work since Saturation, and I really love it. I'm sad that this is going to be their second to their last album already, but I think it's really good in this case. Roadrunner, Road Road weird music. Armin Hammer's uh, Armin Hammer uh, collab with the Alchemist and their new album called Haram. Very, I guess, very. It's very abstract and yet it's so. It's so. Oh, for me, it's very interesting in the sound in the sonic aspect. There's also um, notable feature here is um, who's this Earl Sweatshirt. So it's, you should check him out. I I don't have so many, but like uh, I recommend. Um, Mariposa by Peach Tree Rascals. If you're into like, like um chill stuff <laughs> and like, um, I also recommend a song called Indeska. I <laughs> it's by Radwims, the same uh artist who did like uh what's this, Kimi no Nawa and Weathering with You. So if you're into more of those. Ian Deska is a nice song. Okay. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for listening to our discussion. I hope you enjoy our interesting and enlightening pod, uh, podcast. So join us again in an inner nook for the next discussion. Until then, take care and goodbye. Thank you, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Like and subscribe now. Thank you. <laughs> well, like and subscribe, LSCS YouTube. Let's go. Mm. Ring the bell notification, ganon. Vlog. That was guys make the hashtag trend. <laughs> ano ano hashtag ha? Roger si Ira. Ira. Ano hashtag nyan? <laughs>
Ah, the irony came in all your words. Yeah. Check. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 The views and opinions of the hosts and resource persons do not represent those of the organization, the university, and its stakeholders. Viewer discretion is advised.